And uh, let's move to the last speaker for today's uh, session, uh, who is uh, Jared Holsworth uh, from Ixtron, and he's going to give a talk on uh, pioneering micro-LED epi wafer production, overcoming challenges and enabling innovation. Okay, just before lunch, uh, I'll try not to keep you waiting too long. Yeah, so for my talk today, um, I'll go through the micro-LED opportunities and challenges, uh, what are Axtron's solutions, uh, up, uh, up to 200 millimeter, uh, what are our 300 millimeter uh, solutions for micro-LED, and finally a takeaway. So what are the micro-LED opportunities and challenges? Um, if you know Axtron, I mean, we've, we've been part of this compound semiconductor landscape uh, for now 40 years. Um, we see a lot of growth uh, occurring in the GAN power as well as the silicon carb carbide power markets, uh, RF uh, electronics as well as micro-LED, and that's what uh, we're talking about today. Um, those, those megatrends really are supporting CO2 emissions reductions, um, you know, the, the hunger for data, uh, all the data centers, and seeing a, a major trend to help support uh, reducing that, um, the need for AI and, and uh, huge power demands uh, really are, are amplifying the, the benefits of GAN power. And uh, of course, we want to help with uh, the new era of displays uh, using uh, micro-LEDs. What, what we do internally, especially, is, is, is work with the requirements. What, what do we do? How can we help uh, you know, bring uh, the micro-LED epitaxy to the next level? What's needed for micro-LEDs? We really break it down into uh, three main categories. Uh, defect performance, uh, I think as uh, previous uh, speakers mentioned, of course, dealing with these sm small uh, displays and, and, and the pixels. Individual uh, defects can really destroy the performance, and uh, we, we appreciate the need to get these perfect displays, and so we, we have solutions in that. Um, for the wafer transfer or, or pixel transfer, there a key aspect is getting uniformity down, right? Um, of course, we want, uh, in the third point, cost. But these two are pretty well correlated, right? Uh, if you have to do a lot of steps to account for non-uniformity in a wafer, that builds cost into the system. Uh, if we can deliver low cost, uh, very good uh, wavelength uniformities, then I think solutions going forward can really uh, deliver what's needed. And of course, different wafer sizes. Uh, a lot of our development uh, has been in six inch and eight inch, but we're showing the path now also to 300 millimeter. So what do we have for products there? Um, the, the G5 Plus C is our standard for the, the gallium nitride products uh, for blue and green applications. Um, we have uh, full automation available for this product suite, and uh, it has really established itself uh, as a market leader uh, also in uh, gallium nitride uh, power as well. Um, for arsenide phosphides, uh, using the traditional uh, aluminum, indium, gallium phosphide LEDs, we have a G10 arsenide phosphide product. This is based on a similar platform, uh, leveraging full automation as well. Um, is also used in the Vixel and the LiDAR markets, uh, 3D sensing. And today, I think for introducing the 300 millimeter products, we have what's called our Hyperion product line. Um, this is a single wafer. Uh, shower head reactor, so we use our close coupled shower head technology that we've had in the market for uh, many years, and uh, we're able to do blue green uh, as well as then an Ingan red product. So, our 200 millimeters, uh, what our 200 millimeter products and, and everything we've, we've done here um, are really based on three foundational aspects uh, for delivering uh, the market needs. Um, as I mentioned before, the, the particle levels uh, are extremely important uh, to give high yield at the end of the line. Um, on wafer uniformity, um, we're able to work with our batch uh, uh, reactor technology, uh, which I'll show. And then um, 
you know, our drive to continuously reduce cost uh, is just in our DNA and in how we continue to develop products.